right. Uh, we have with us a special guest today, uh, Rupa Jha, who is the CEO and co-founder of Collective Newsroom. That was launched, I guess, close to five months now. Yeah. Right. Yes. I remember being there. And prior to that, uh, Rupa Jha has been part of BBC for over two decades. And she has served in uh, senior leadership roles um, in different countries. And she continues to uh, lead uh, BBC in India as well. Thank you, Rupa, for joining us. Thank you so much. You know, let me ask you the very first question that uh, two decades at BBC and uh, then a collective newsroom uh, comes uh, out, you know, you form that. What was the idea behind launching uh, this when you had such a big platform already where you could have voiced a lot of stories? Yes. Well, things changed. Uh, I'm sure you know about it, that the FDI regulation in India changed. That meant that BBC couldn't have held 100% uh, um, ownership of the India company. And we were all part of India company. So obviously, it threw a challenge in front of us. Uh, there were things and you know plans that of course, BBC management was thinking through. While this was going on, we all felt that we loved the profession of uh, and the space that BBC provided us with. That we know you could do stories, you could do the way you want to do it. And um, we were the biggest bureau outside UK. We became number one uh, market for the BBC globally. India remains number one market. And we've been with the BBC for so many years. And it just felt right time to come out of the BBC and launch our own company because uh, just imagine if only you were to go out and look for a job and do work in another media houses. Um, we felt, why not we do our own stuff? Why don't we create that space that we love so much and uh, offer ourselves to the BBC that, you know, we will be partnering. Partner. We are happy to partner with right. you. So four of us, which is... Um, like it's me, uh, Sara Hassan, right. Sanjay Majumdar and Mukesh Sharma. We Four of us have spent like more than 20 years in BBC. So collectively, we have almost 100 years of experience. Uh, so we decided to come out and uh, form our own Indian-owned company called Collective Newsroom. Then we had a few other people who joined us. And we made this proposal to the BBC. And uh, very graciously, BBC also needed Right. This they kind this of thriving market. In absolutely. India. They would not have liked to come out of this market or they would have thought of something else, I'm sure. But it came as an alternative uh, plan to them. And they their trust is, you know, we are very blessed that they could trust us with this kind of responsibility for them. There we are the sole producer of content for them and publisher as well for their six, seven platforms. That is BBC Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Gujarati, Marathi and English YouTube. So we produce all the content and we publish them. So in that sense, we are the publisher for BBC content in India and, and we we cover India for for the BBC, BBC. here as well as uh, you know for the global audience. Right. So that was that was the thing actually. That was the trigger. But we were all itching to do something different, and right. opportunity came. Absolutely. So you know, it's a DNA. The essential DNA remains the same. That is the moot point, right? Mm -hmm. So how does your content approach differ from when you were wearing a different hat? in the same company. Hmm. Is there a change in the approach that you have towards the content creation? Not at all. Actually, if at all, it will become better and it has become better because, you know, the responsibility is bigger on us. Uh, so while we were producing, we were within BBC, the the mood point, as you said, for any good journalism and why we come uh, to become journalists is that, you know, you do independent, credible, transparent, impartial journalism. That has been the cornerstone for the BBC across the world. And it stands true for India as well. We've been um, trained in that kind of journalistic values. So while we are out of the BBC, we are serving the BBC platform. And we are that kind of journalists. That is the whole purpose. The whole purpose of coming out and forming Collective Newsroom is to form another space based on that shared value, uh, which many other organizations also share. It's not just the BBC, right. right? So I think we just want to carry, we, are, we want to be the flag bearer of those values, which, which really drives us to pick up journalism. Uh, so I think our work should 
should answer that question. If the audiences have found any difference in how we cover India or how we are telling the story post we have become collective newsroom. So there has been no such, uh, you know, observation from the audiences or from the BBC. And we want to just become better and better and better. Yeah. Right. So two decades at BBC, um, what have been the key learnings that um, you have carried forth from that newsroom to the new newsroom that you have? Yeah. There have been many. Actually, you know, BBC was my first job. <laughs> Came out of the college and I was lucky to, uh, to, uh, to get this opportunity. I was working in London for a few years. Mm -hmm. Then I worked in Africa. Uh, within BBC, I found different opportunities to grow. And I'm very thankful to the BBC for having that trust in me and giving me that opportunity. Uh, I think the, f the biggest uh, learning, if I were to say, was to not to be scared. I mean, just to be truthful about, you know, that that whole pursuit of truth and fact has remained the basic, uh, you know, calling. Right. And I think it's just not about me. It's about anyone who who is part of the collective or part of the BBC. I think the organization is very good in instilling those values in it because you understand the importance of the legacy. You understand why you are here in this. So when we came out to become collective, we realized that, right, we may not be carrying the legacy of BBC uh, like over our head. But the fact is we are serving the audiences, which is coming on the BBC platform, thinking and, and uh, trusting BBC for its uh, transparency, credibility, independence, all of it. So we just, we just feel very responsible. So right. that is the first thing that how you don't have to be scared of the truth and follow to be in the pursuit of truth and fact is right. one thing which I learned. And secondly, to be a leader who uh, which you generally don't see a lot in the corporate world, especially how to be an empathetic leader. I think we really value our people, people not only in the audiences, like valuing audiences and valuing people who work with you is extremely important to also tell the stories the way you want to tell the stories because you can't be a nasty leader telling a great story. That's what I, yeah. I believe. I think you really have There's to value connect, people. There is a connect. I do feel that has been my, uh, that, is my that has been my belief that you really have to have that empathy to understand the story that you are you are going to tell with that uh, you know truthfulness and i i therefore i feel that uh, that i have learned from the bbc by being a leader within the bbc setup when i came out of the bbc setup they really made me a leader who who feels uh, that you know why audiences are important and why people who work for you are so important their right. well-being is so important right yeah wonderful you know uh, you said the BBC is one of the biggest markets. You know, India is one of the biggest it's markets for the BBC. And um, what has made, what are the elements, what are the mm. broader things that have made BBC so popular in India, mm. according to you? I think it, the legacy has been, uh, my goodness, it's been almost a hundred years. So right. I think what has been the beauty of BBC, not only in India, but across, that it maintained its standard of uh, uh, truthfulness, its, its transparency and credibility and independence. I think that it maintained, despite so many problems that we have faced in different era, uh, that has given that confidence to the peop people, the, yeah. the audiences who have been consuming us. And it has been smart in adapting also. Like, uh, uh, you know, BBC has been around for, for almost 100 years, as I said. So initially how how we how we we serve the audiences uh, was through radio mm -hmm. so when we changed into digital mm -hmm. we we knew that this is the time to change our platform so i think the adaptability of platform and going where audiences are because this is a change you know people are not coming they are not doing appointment viewing they are not they have got Plenty. plethora of you know uh, access point for information but if you be there in front of the queue where they are, where the audiences are. So BBC has done that, I think, quite smartly. And they have always kept India as a very important market. They have given that attention. They have given that uh, resources. They have the kind of investment that BBC has made in India is, is incredible, uh, you know. And that's, that's the reason that India as right. a market has grown. And BBC has also understood the potential of the market. Uh, and uh, I think it serves both the purpose. And India is such a vibrant democracy. Who would want to be here? You know, who would want to serve the audiences here? They are very discerning audiences. Um, so in that sense, I think BBC has lived its expectation through ages. That's, That's why being people translated come. into this. Yeah. Part. 
You know, um, what is your opinion about the kind of uh, journalism we see in India overall? <laughs> well, you tell me, you cover media. Uh, I think it's a, it's a mixed feeling while as I, uh, as I keep saying that I'm very hopeful and I keep seeing fantastic courageous work even in you know, small segments, small groups of people and, and digital and social media intervention has really democratized that space that you, you, you see that, you know, in the last election, YouTubers played such a significant role. So it's a very important disruption in the media market. It's no more that unless you are the big fours of the Indian media, you will not find a voice, you will not be visible. No, we are right. not tied up to only the big media houses. Right. So overall, I feel that, you know, independence of media has has declined. And I think independence of media has declined is quite evident from all the data and all the reports that we get. And it's not only because of one factor, it's they've been cumulative factor that overall, I think, um, you know, media has and media owners have not has not been, um, what do you call that, courageous enough. Uh, there are, of course, questions of revenue stream. There are questions of uh, how, you know, if, if you feel that if I tell a story and I'll be languishing behind, you know, behind jail, right. you will really hold yourself back. So that kind of nurturing and cultivating environment that, that any media space needs mm -hmm. uh, has been lacking. So I think um, I have a mixed feeling while I really think that big media houses could have done much more than what they do. Uh, I'm very, very um, impressed and appreciate the effort that smaller media houses are making. Right. You know, while uh, uh, you've created collective newsroom, you know, uh, it has a DNA of BBC to a large extent. <laughs> but how are you trying to carve a niche in the sense of different identity being a new product mm -hmm. altogether? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it challenging also? It's quite challenging. <laughs> <laughs> because we are so much, and you rightly said that the DNA is so much uh, embedded, in this, embedded like that, and right. we all grew up, uh, you know, in BBC. Uh, it is challenging mm. to carve out, even if we carve, we are carving out um, our own identity by taking forward the the good things that we enjoyed within the BBC. And of course, there were not so good things. So what we are trying to do is that you know, how do we? not carry forward things which we, as mm -hmm. part of the BBC for 20 years, 25 years, we recognize those weaknesses and gaps, right? Uh, not so much, in, not about journalism I'm talking about, but just at the organizational level. And every organization has those gaps, even I'm sure Collective would have many right. gaps and many other organizations. So we have learned through those gaps and we are trying to fill those gaps. Uh, we are, we, with, even within BBC, we are, we, we were pioneers in making this newsroom more diversified, right? So we are carrying forward that. How how BBC is still very London centric. Right. The London lens is very very strong, um, and we want to kind of you know bring that uh, local lens. We want to the bring India lens. exactly India right. lens, right. Uh, and even within India. Uh, further, uh, you right. know, lenses that is and filter that is important. Raise when we cover politics uh, and when there are more people from north of India, there's always a lens that is very North India centric. Right. So how do we keep challenging ourselves because we are aware of those gaps uh, at various levels? So in that sense, we are carving out ourselves uh, slightly differently. And I hope mm. that as we grow bigger and better, um, we will be able to, uh, you know, be identified as as a group of journalists who our international level who are right. credible because they are also serving BBC which is such a credible organization and that BBC could trust us but we also want to do you know, things which is faster and uh, doesn't get into this whole red tapeism and <laughs> bureaucratic setup mm -hmm. that is a bane for all the big organization so yeah in many ways we hope that in coming years we'll be seen as an uh, Right. as a new uh, disrupting force in a, in a creative fashion, of right. course, not in the negative way uh, right. within Indian media space. Right. So uh, so you have a lot of languages within India. Uh, give me a sense of how are they performing, which one is getting the most... Uh, audience I mean, how how, do, how does it play out if you could give me a sense so we we are looking after six indian languages right. for the bbc this is hindi tamil telugu gujarati punjabi marathi and english youtube mm -hmm. so uh, hindi and tamil are the legacy languages they have been around for many years and these other four are very new they right. got launched in 2017 so their life has not been uh, very very uh, long right. um, the best performance of course in terms of you see volume and the numbers etc is hindi because mm -hmm. that's the biggest largest market and it's also doing very well uh, in fact BBC Hindi YouTube is the biggest across the BBC it's bigger bigger than across, across the BBC 
BBC. It's bigger than BBC News, the main YouTube. Uh, and that has been the main driving force for, for India growth as well. We are on other platforms too. So uh, other languages, uh, as you know, it's true that Marathi is a, is a language of mm. growth. Uh, so is Tamil. Right. It's a very strong language and Telugu. But Tamil uh, has a very strong growth trajectory for us. So yeah, so that we are doing fine. In fact, the fact that BBC uh, India became the uh, you know number one market for the BBC is driven by uh, these languages growth, mm -hmm. because of course English has been around for, right. for years, right? Uh, but the growth spurt came because BBC expanded its footprint in the regional languages, and this is true for anyone, anyone in the market that English growth has plateaued. Uh, and the real growth will come from the regional languages. Right. So that is the place to right. look for Watch growth. For, right. yeah. So uh, in terms of programming uh, with this new uh, newsroom in place, mm. are you uh, kind of experimenting with new formats or any new programming? Yeah, I mean, see, uh, it, it's always a kind of, because BBC, as I said, is very kind of, you know, is, always likes to be the pioneer in right. innovation and technology. So we are... Um, venturing into podcasts which is um, which is, which seems like the new fad <laughs> in the media industry we are venturing there we do long form investigative journalism uh, which not many media houses would do because it it demands a lot of resources and thankfully bbc has that recently we did a fantastic uh, investigation um, in midwife's confession which was across all languages and english it did very well it was a story from bihar and katihar mm -hmm. that how uh, you know midwives used to kill children how they changed it's not only about the story of uh, female infanticide it is also about how they changed and they became the agent of change uh, in bihar so it's a fantastic uh, you know long form documentary that we are doing we are also experimenting as many others are around the the big platforms, you know, how algorithm also forces you to change yourself. So be it short form video, be it, you know, audio led pro, uh, programming um, or the long form, uh, different formats of you. Uh, I mean, visualization of story has become a very important part. It's right. not just the video, but generally the visualization that how do you really make the story breathe and and, and immersive uh, experience. Experience right. uh, is extremely important now for the audiences, right. but everything becomes stale in very quickly in digital yeah, media. Keep on, exactly. <laughs> keep on inventing and right. uh, carrying forward. Yeah. I have two more questions. One is uh, you did speak about your uh, leadership style, but I want a little bit of mm. elaborate answer on that. That uh, what is your mantra of managing newsrooms? How to get the best stories out of people, according mm. to you? I think mantra of leading any set of people is uh, actually how do you make them feel now it, i'm not saying anything which is rocket science people have said this but actually this is what we all uh, it has been our lived experience how do you make people feel is first thing are they do they feel valued or not uh, how do you make not only that you are fair which is again uh, not a big ask in any team but also how do you appear to be fair how do you, how do you, how much do you really believe in the sense of equality and equity these are very important part of um, you know how teams will be driven because see it's i don't really buy this argument that you may, there are many media houses who pay big salary to people but do they really feel valued there has to be a work life balance i do feel that that we miss out on many on many occasions there has to be work life balance we have to also be respecting people's you know me time and right. where they want to draw and also accepting that people go through different phases and just this whole obsession of growth and i know where it comes from and why it comes from. It is easy for me to say this because I have a secured funding from BBC, so it's probably it is easy. But I think we also have to understand that um, everything can't be and should not be turned into a number game. It cannot be. It is a creative field. It is a field where you need time, patient, investment, and uh, you have to provide that to people. That sense of safety net is extremely important. And once you give that uh, you know, safety net and when you say, when you tell people you have to grow, I think that really doesn't excite people unless you really give them a purpose to grow. And a purpose every time can't be money. 
and is not money. Let me be very honest. Of course, people should be paid. And I think journalism in India is suffering and we are hearing and reading stories about how journalism schools are shutting down, how people are not opting for this profession is also because it's not well paid. So we have to start paying well to people. But at the same time, we also have to give purpose to to these people because right. mostly we all come to journalism not as the okay kuch aur nahi kiya to ab journalism kar lo aisa nahi hai people have made that conscious decision of coming into this profession and that has been public interest has always been the center of that decision making if i ask you rohel i'm sure you will say the same thing that you we are driven we are public spirited individuals and who will save us from maintaining that public spirit it's right. you know it's the, it's the team it's, it's the leadership team, right. it's the company and once you forget it you become like only after you know either you're sucking up to the power you're not holding power accountable you're sucking up to the profit then you lose the charm then i'll better off be a you yeah. know a clerk in the bank than come and do journalism yeah. which is a very uh, it's not an easy <laughs> profession it's a dangerous profession so right. i think these are the things these are my mantra right. i don't know if my team is happy but <laughs> <laughs> I am just assuming that they are happy because you know almost um, we have very low attrition rate everybody decided to move with us to almost everybody decided to move with us to collective newsroom so the kind of trust that I have enjoyed along with my other um, co-founder member is amazing it's incredible it's really unbelievable sometimes it's just it's unrealistic that my god touch wood it just <laughs> remains like that wonderful so uh, finally uh, what is your vision for collective newsroom from here on hmm. So the vision is again to be the home as we have put it in our literature if <laughs> you check it out but that is something very heartfelt the vitri a the spirit of collective has to be there it has to be a sajha space as we call in hindi uh, that where people feel that they are heard they are loved and they are valued so to maintain that space for for the individuals in this industry who are with us to grow uh and to grow in this media space where we are able to carry forward the legacy of good journalism uh, that you know we have been trained in uh, how do we help how do we build that legacy is also something that we are really driven about how do we train people in that how do we also cover india the way it should be covered led by facts you know led by expertise and to be telling stories in the most innovative way so we hope that in coming years bbc is not the only client that we have that there are other clients domestic and international who would see the value in in the company like ours uh, where we have put premium to uh, you know truthfulness you know led by fact as we say uh, having people who who know the job and also to train up people to do the job it's you only don't get people all trained and you know just top of the uh, lot you develop people so that whole nurturing and cultivating talent is also a big uh, driving force and big ambition for us that we become that incubator <laughs> for the media industry in right. india well i think i should ask you one small question yeah, sure. which is uh, which is your favorite indian television channel or a news oh my god <laughs> <laughs> well don't get as you know i often say that i have uh, put in my admiration for all the small digital outlets and individuals who are doing fantastic they job they changed the narrative during they changed the narrative not only during election but no. otherwise also um i think they are really bringing the best stories they are bringing the best stories Wonderful. despite having no resources or very limited resources right. i think that's where that shows that money is not the driver of good journalism it's the intent and the content that yeah it is i mean money of course is important because right. otherwise you will not continue telling the big stories and important stories so money remains there but i think the purpose and the intent is equally important right so that is thank you thanks rupa thanks for sharing so those much. candid points with us thank you thank you so thanks. much